Hello, I am Katrick and today I'm making this video for the Construct2 Academy. This is part 2 of the video on how to make the shooting gallery. Be sure to check part 1 to see where to download the assets and how to set up the project. The game we are set to do today is a shooting gallery using kenny.nl assets. You control the game with the mouse and shoot on targets giving you points. There is sounds and music and whenever you shoot in the dead center of a target you have an extra bonus as well as extra time added every five targets hit. Only the round targets have the bullseye effect. The ducks only provides 50 points. When the time is up, your full score is displayed and the game invites you to right click to restart. The score is added to the Skyra Arcade leaderboards. Let's now see how to set up our event sheet to have a working game. Go into the event sheet. In Construct2, the event sheet is read from top to bottom and whenever an event is encountered, its conditions are tested. If all the conditions of an event are true, its actions and sub-events are then executed and tested as well. We'll start with adding an event a system event on start of layout and this is already a kind of exception to the rules I've just set up. You can see a little green arrow which means that this condition is a triggered condition which means that this condition only happens on start of layout when the layout is being loaded and it only happens at that moment. It means that every tick of execution later it still will be seeing that event but the condition will never be true again it won't be triggered as long as we are not restarting the game as long as we are not restarting the layout so on start of layout first thing we want to do is to to use the action load JSON of our array and we are going to as as mentioned go into the sprite font txt provided pick up all this json line copy it control c control v to paste it it's down so it means that it's actually filling up the array with a lot of values and the correct size etc with only an action select the event you can right click and add a sub event or press the S key on your keyboard as a keyboard shortcut. Go into the array for each element condition and we'll select X and Y because actually this action does set the array on two dimensions and we will want to go through every cells of the array and for every cells of the array we are going to set txt score character width the character is going to be array dot at dot at open parenthesis zero dot array dot y and the width is going to be the very same except it's going to be the 1x actually it's the opposite the width is the 0x and the character to be applied that width are the 1 in our array we have 
two columns, two axes. The first one represents the width and the second represents the characters that are going to use that width. And so with this single action and the fact that we are looping through our array on a single tick of execution, we are setting for the txt score object the correct character width according to the correct characters. And hold down the control key, drag drop this action, right click it, replace the object, txt score to txt time, do it again, replace again the object txt time to txt final. And with this simple event we are setting all the characters width for all of our text objects our sprite font objects. And on start of layout we also do want to start playing some music. So again select the top level event, right click, add a sub event. This time it's in audio. We want to check if his tag is playing. The tag is going to be music. I'm using capital letter. If you don't want to, don't. Just make sure that whatever the tag name you are using there is, it's going to be the same as the tag that is going to be used into the action we are about to set. But what we want to do is actually on start of layout to check out if a certain sound is actually not playing. So right click, select the condition only. There I'm selecting the event. And if I'm selecting on the right of the event itself, I'm only selecting the condition. You can see that there is a bit of space there. Right click, invert, and so now the condition is that whenever the tag music is not playing. And so when it's not playing, I want an action, an audio action to play. I want to play Matt Oglesby 3. If you remember, that's our music sound. It's going to be looping. It's going to be value of minus two decibel. So it's going to be not as loud as the main volume. It's background music, if you will. And so the tag music with the capital letter, like I've set into the, into the condition. And so finally, on our start of layout, the last action we need to do is to call a function. The function we have still to write is going to be called init. It's going to be the initialization of everything we need for our projects. So add an event, a function, on function, and let's make our function init. A function is a triggered event, as you can see, and it can only be triggered when it's being called by an action, a specific action, within our code. So whenever it's going to be read on different tick of execution, the condition will never be true. Uh, it won't be executed. But whenever this action is going to be read, so when on start of layout, actually, then this function is going to be called. And in our init function, we want to set all the initialization to make our project works. So we start by destroying the target instance. We do the same for the target stand instance. We set our mouse cursor. We set its style to known. So the mouse cursor is going to be invisible. We set the txt ready go object. We set its boolean variable ready to true. And txt ready go. We set a timer for three seconds. That is going to be executed only once, and that is going to be called get ready. So again, a tag to a certain request to a timer, a bit like we've did for the audio earlier. 
it's important to always use the same names and the same format. Capital letters are not not capital letters. So we will get back to the timer a bit later. Set the txt score to score two points, a space, and there I would like to add the value of score. So I'll be done for now. Right click and add a global variable that we are going to name score. It's a number, it's zero by default, it's okay. Go back to the text, add the Greek end and score. And as you can see, with the auto completion, it's providing the score global variable and it will display its value. We need to add another global variable that we name time left and by default it's set at zero, it's okay. And in this very event, in our initialization, we set the value of time left to 90. So it's going to be 90 seconds, so a minute and a half for the player to make the better score as possible by shooting as many targets as possible. And we also set the txt time text, set its text to time left, points, a space, and time left, again, the value of the global variable. That's all we need to do in our init function. We now add an event txt ready go is boolean ready that we have set just there in our init function. So whenever this time that's where the rule apply. Whenever on each tick of execution whenever txt ready go boolean instance variable ready is true, we will want to modify the size of the object. And so we are going to set its size to self. So the keyword self refers to the instance of the object type we are setting the action for. And so self refers to that instance. So self width plus 32 multiplied by dt. dt is a system expression. It's used for frame rate independency. You can learn more on this by going into the tutorials on skyra.com and searching for frame rates and the first result delta time and frame rate independence is the tutorial you want to read. The explanation is very well and it contains everything you need to know. So I strongly recommend you read that tutorial to understand why I'm using DT right there. And for the height, we do the same self.height plus 12.dt. I found out 32 and 12 by trial and errors and this is what gave the best aspect ratio in my opinion. So as long as the ready boolean variable is true, we are making the txt ready go object, this one, grow up and we add a new event txt ready go on timer and this is where we will be using the same tag as we did earlier in that action, the get ready tag. So after three seconds, after having encountered that action, this event is going to kick in and is going to set the boolean variable ready to false, which means that from now on this event won't be executed anymore, those actions won't be executed, 
since this condition is going to be false we will set the text ready go frame to 1 we will set its size to self dot image width and self dot image height and image width and image height are actually the original size of the texture itself not the size of the object we are applying the size of the texture to the object so it's going to be if you go there click resize we know that it's a uh, hundred eleven width and sixty six height by default and the object is going to have this very size when encountering this action and txt ready go we we restart the fade and again go into txt ready go but this time on fade out finished so after we have initiated and started the fade once the fade is going to be finished so after one second we will set the value go to true and we will execute two functions that we are still to write one is named create duck and the other is named create target And so if we preview our project, the ready growth, go, and it fades. And the music is playing as well. That's all we have. And also the water is moving as well, on the horizontal and moving, changing its angle. But that's about it for now. We go back to our project. And so we need to start creating some targets and some decks. So add an event function. We will start with the target creation. Create target, and we would want to use the action create objects. And as the target are going to be only into the background, whereas the decks are going to be in the foreground on the water we want to create the object target stand on the layer grass we create it at an x of 980 and a y of 330 those are values that i found out by simply positioning my object and finding out what felt good in the into the project it's trial and error as often target stand we set the animation to iron stand remember our object contains a couple of animations iron stand and wood stand and the wood stand is only the one for the ducks the targets are having an iron stand so we set the animation, it's not necessary because by default it's the correct animation, but bear with me. And as we have created this target stand on the right of our screen, it's going to go to the left. And so we set the direction, so set the value of the year to 1. We set a random cycle position for it where to start to do so we simply use the expression random that will return a random number from a range so as i'm simply putting one there it's going to return a random number from zero to zero dot nine 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 to infinity it's never going to reach one it's a, a limit 
and how the random expression works but it's going to return 0 0.25 or 0 0.259768 and huge numbers after the decimal and we have created the targets stand objects now we want to create another object it is going to be a target this time still on the layer grass and the X is going to be the target stand dot image point X one save him for the Y position it's going to be the image point Y one so if you remember if we go back into our image points for our target stand the image point is uh, the position where the object gets larger and so the target is going to be created right at this position let's add a behavior to our targets also and it's going to be the pin behavior so when we create our target we set the animation to target because remember the target also contains several animations target duck and back so for now we are creating a target only we set a random animation frame because we can so we set the frame to int this expression will return an integer number a uh, complete number without decimal because we are still using the random expression that can return a decimal number but the fact that we are setting it into an int expression means that we are only getting an integer number in the end because our frames are integers 1, 2, 3, etc. and so we want the target dot animation frame counts so it's going to return a number between 0 and the total number of frame we have in our animation so currently 5 0 to 5 because you can see that the index is 4 but we are starting at 0 so 1 2 3 4 5 frames we also want to set the size of the target to 64 by 64 which is smaller but makes them a little bit harder to hit somehow and feels better in our project in our gameplay the target object also needs an instance variable which is named parent stand it's a number we keep it at zero for now and we are going to use it right there by setting it to the value of target stand dot uid the uid is a unique identifier number that allows us to know that we are referring to a specific instance we are going to use it in such a way that for each target instance its parent stand is the UID of the target stand it was created with so you can see it by default in our editor there is a UID value of 5 for our target stand and our target UID is 6 but the parent stand there value would be 5 because the target stand is 5 but as we are automating it we don't need to know those values we are just needing to know that we are setting them at the correct moment and that will allow us to destroy the targets the appropriate target instance when the target stands has reached a position out of screen we don't want to add the behavior destroy outside of layout 
because by default we are creating the object outside of layout. So it would be as soon as we create it, it would be destroyed. So we are going to manually handle the destruction of those instances and make a kind of group as well as with the bullseye which is going to have the same instance same type of instance variable that is going to be parent targets it also needs a behavior pin as well we are getting there though let's pin the targets on the target stand and currently we know that the instance it's being pinned on is the instance that just was created previously in our event so it creates a target stand sets some values to it creates a target sets some values to it pin this target to the target stand and at this moment we'll make some ordering some Z ordering by moving the Z the target stand objects behind tiled grass and doing the same with the targets it's just so that newly created objects are usually on top of the previously created objects so even though it's supposed to be behind the tiled grass we would have a target stand that is in front as it is currently and moving this way which is not the impression we want to give so it's going to be set moved behind this object to have the impression that there is a mechanical arm that is behind a carton board tied grass and finally we create yet another object which is going to be the bullseye on la layer grass again and at the x target dot image point x1 and target image point y1 if you remember this image point is the center of our targets and we are creating the bullseye object so that is directly on the center of the target in the same order of ID that we have creating our target so that it's on the image point of the target stand by creating them at a certain position we are ordering our objects so let's pin our bullseye to our target let's set the power and target value to target dot uid and let's set the bullseye visibility to invisible and the last thing we do is to start a timer of the txt ready object we are going to choose it's another expression that will return one of the different values that we are going to set right there so 3 5 and 7 and so one of those values is going to be the duration of the timer so either 3 seconds 5 seconds or 7 seconds and we name it creates targets but beware although it is the same name as the function it's not the same thing it is a timer so we add an event right after on timer create target and we are simply function call function create targets so whenever we are creating a target in the end three five or seven seconds later we are going to create another one 
and it's looping this way indefinitely and in the same order of id now and as you can remember our first once the txt object has faded out but is still existing so that we can have other timers we do create a target and create a duck so let's now create duck which is pretty much the same thing as the create target so we hold on the control key after having selecting the event drag drop it and let's rename it create duck but this time we are creating it on the layer water at the position minus 142 and 432 again values that I found out by trial and error the iron stand this time it's not the one we are going to use we are going to use the wood stand the direction is going to be zero it's going to go to the right we still want though to have a random cycle position and also we want to set a frame and to choose either zero or one because we have two frames to choose from in this animation it's either the complete wood or the one with the little rubber on it to fix it we create an object target but this time it's on water layer but it will still be created at the target stand image point x1 and y1 positions so far so good the deck animation though is the one we set we still pick a random frame according to the frame we do have in this animation we don't change its size though we still need the parent stand and we need, still need to pin it we move behind the what the tiled water object though and we remove everything that is in relation to the bullseye because there is no bullseye on our ducks and instead of create a target we do create duck and this time it's a little different it's going to be either every four seven or ten seconds again select an event control key is down drag drop create duck create duck this way we have a, a loop of target creations although at the moment those are not moving so let's make it so that when the boolean go is true we create a sub event for the target stand we compare if the direction is zero and when the, the direction is zero we target stand let's add global variable first which is going to be our moving speed and by default is 64 I'm using a, a global variable there because I will be changing the X position of the target stand according to its current position and as it's going to the right I'm going to add to it moving speed multiplied by dt the expression for delta time that we have seen earlier and so having the global variable moving speed there instead of a set value allows me to simply have to modify the value there if I'm not happy with the current speed instead of having to modify it right there because as it stands I'm going to duplicate 
this event afterwards and apply the same speed but in the other direction going to the left this action makes it so that the target stand is going to the right and as a sub event we want to check that the target stand once it's reached so it's greater or equal an exposition of 996 pixels uh, again a value that I've set up it's outside of my layout when it happens what I want to do is to destroy the target stand so as I said we duplicate by holding down the control key and drag dropping the event I will modify the second so when direction the dear instance variable value is 1 we are going actually to the left so we are removing moving speed from the current target position and so in the same order of ID when it's less or equal than minus 142 we destroy the target we destroy the target stand but we also need to destroy the targets that is pinned to the target stand whether it's a target or it's a duck and if it is a target it also has a bullseye that needs to be destroyed if we don't destroy those objects they just will keep on existing and it also means that after a while they'll still take memory up and keep building memory and memory and memory there are objects that aren't being destroyed they have been created and they are still in memory even though their usage is over the, the target can't be reached anymore bullseye either because they are outside of the layout outside of the play field if you will so we need to destroy them as well and it is done by using the undestroyed condition for the target stand and so undestroyed we add another condition pressing the C key we pick the target where parent stand is equal to target stand dot UID so our main instance that is being picked at that moment is the targets stand object instance that is being destroyed this target stand instance has a unique UID and this UID is unique to a certain target and allows us to pick the instance of the target as well so we pick the target and simply destroy the target moreover as a sub event we check for the bullseye which has parent target value is target u dot uid and we destroy the bullseye the fact of making it a sub event means that if the object doesn't exist it won't screw the execution of this uh, event nonetheless and that's how we set our object destructions so now if we preview our program ready go and we do have duck and targets creating and moving that's still all we can do though at the moment but it's working and we have different frames for the targets and the ducks as well as the wood stand as you can see so far so good we can make sure that the instances are well destroyed by going using the debugger and checking for target stand objects when the target stand is going to be on the left even though it's outside of the layout and either it goes it's being destroyed 
so that's all good our code is working and it's working as well for the ducks I believe target stands are destroyed and so are targets so at that moment we do have a loop uh, we do have targets that are moving we do have pretty much the mechanic aspect of the start of the game a little weight as the ready go is being uh, growing up and fading but we still don't have a user interaction so let's add it when txt ready go is go let's add a blank sub event in which we are setting the position of the rifle according to clamp which is an expression that is going to limit the values where the object can be according to an expression and the expression is mouse.x so the x position of the mouse object even though we have set the cursor to invisible this value still exists and still is available plus 128 and we want to set it at a lower value of 256 and a upper value of 854 so that's it clamp makes it so that this expression mouse x plus 128 is at minimum always going to be 256 and at max always 854 and we do the same for the height plus y plus 256 390 and 600 again values that I found out through trial and error and that felt to me like they were good values to apply to the to the project to what I was looking for I also want to move the crosshair object so set its position and it's going to be according to mouse.x and mouse.y so now we do have an ID of where our mouse is on the on the screen so make a quick preview ready go ready is happening nothing and when the go is happening now I can mou move my mouse I see where it is and the rifle is following up and as you can see as boundaries where it uh, it won't go further uh, you can see that the rifle is behind the curtain that's something we will need to fix because it doesn't look very very good and very realistic in our perspective so right click Z order send to top of layer we want the rifle to be in front of every other object we have the first interaction by moving up our, our mouse but we do want to be able to shoot so at an event mouse on click left button clicked okay but we will need to add a few more conditions to this to make sure that it's in a, a certain circumstances only so first we want to make sure that txt ready is go and we will also want to limit the shots while we are hearing the reload sound so let's add an instance variable to our rifle let's call it ready make it boolean and make its initial value to true so we can shoot right away and so whenever see key to add a condition whenever the rifle is ready we also want the the shoot to happen 
So let's see now what we are doing. Add an action. We we'll want first first thing to play the shot sound, not looping, with the tag shot. We want to set a rifle to not ready. So f ready is false. And we will create an object shot impact on HUD at crosshair.x and crosshair.y position. It should be in between quotes. That's what we are doing for now. Let's add a sub event to check out a few things. We want to check if the crosshair is overlapping a target. And if it is, we want to pick the top instance of the target, so the target that is going to be the closest to us. We want to make sure that the target animation is not the back animation. We'll come to it in a few events and we will also need for later on to pick the target stance According, so we pick it by UID according to target dot parent stand. So whenever I'm shooting, I'm creating a shot impact and playing a sound, and making so that the rifle can't shoot again in uh, if I'm spamming clicks. But at the same time, I'm checking out if I'm overlapping a target and that the target hasn't been shot yet. But I also need to check as a sub-event if the target is a target, so if the animation target is being played, or later on if it's a duck. Depending on that, we will have a bit of different actions. So if it's a target, first thing, I set the animation target of the target to be back. I set the animation frame to be zero. This way it's going to be displaying the round target at the same position, but as you can see, as we have the origin point at the top of the object, it will give the impression that the object has shifted thanks to a, a bullet that hit it. And we now want the target to be moved behind the target stand to complete the impression that the target has, has been shot and fell down. And finally, I will call a function that I will name add score and add a parameter to this function which is going to be one. This function we will see later, we will be writing it a bit later. Also, as this is a target, it's possible that a bullseye is being shot. So again, we pick by... So this time actually, we pick the parent target. This is equal to the target.uid. So we know that this is going to be the, the bullseye that has been pinned to the target and we add another condition to check if the crosshair is overlapping the bullseye. And so let's go back to our crosshair object and modify actually its collision polygon so that it is a square in the middle. 
24 by 24, 26 by 24, 26 by 26, and 24 by 26. So this have only the few pixels right in the middle of the crosshair are going to be checked for collision. And so whenever the crosshair is overlapping the bullseye, we'll want to destroy the bullseye right away. We'll want to add a score of 2. Again, we'll see later what this is about. We are going to play the sound bullseye with the tag of bullseye again and I need to add a global variable named bullseye count which starts at 0 and add 1 to bullseye count good and again as a sub event of this sub event of a sub event we check the value of bullseye count and if it is equal to 4 so starting at 0, it means that we have hit 5 bullseye. We'll want to add 10 to our time left. We'll want to set our current bullseye count to 0. We'll create an object points on the layout HUD. At the position 790 and 50, points, the points instance we've just created is going to have its frame number 3. And we also will set its movement speed to 0, so it's not moving. Again, that's something I just picked my object and positioned it where I find it was uh, looking good. And the frame number 3, if you remember, is the plus 10. We add 10 seconds to our time left when we have hit a 5 bullseye in a row. That was a bit complicated for our target, but that's what we needed to do. And so the score will be added according to the function add score. So that's when the animation is a target. We can duplicate and actually remove the sub event because when the animation is a duck all we need to do is set the animation to back, set the frame to 1, we still move behind the target stand we add a score of 0 and that's all. So now remember we play a shot sound and our rifle is not ready anymore to shoot. We add an event audio on ended shot so that when shot same tag as ended we play another sound and the sound is going to be reload and the tag is going to be reload as well and in the same order of ID on reload ended we do not want to play a sound anymore but actually we want our rifle to be ready so we set ready to true again Let's now add score, so function, on function, add score. And if you remember, we have set different possible parameters, 0 to 2. So, as a sub-event function, we compare the parameter 0 
And if its value is equal to zero, that means that we've hit a duck. We do create an object points on the layer HUD at the position of crosshair dot x and crosshair dot y set it a animation frame to zero so fifty points we set its angle of motion to 270, so it's going up, and we add 50 to the score. So it goes up, but if you remember also, it's fading at the same time, and once, once it faded, it's destroyed. So we don't have to clean it up, so it will move up a bit, fade away and be destroyed. And so let's now see what happens when the parameter is 1. So it's a target we've hit. We still want to create points objects at the same position. The animation frame though this time is going to be 1. So it's a 100 points. And we add 100 to our score. Still going up. No modification there. And finally, when parameter is 2, we still create points, frame of 2, which frame of 2 is 500 points, 500 points, but this time we set it at an offset compared to our crosshair and minus 64 because always remember that in construct x the bigger the x the more on the right it is the bigger the y the more on the bottom it is and this is when we shoot the bullseye we are creating an extra points and so hitting a target in its center earns you 600 points. And finally, as a blank sub-event, B key, we set the txt score object and text to score and score, like we've done in our init. So each time we are modifying the score, we are also modifying the display. Let's preview. Everything seems to be working as intended. When I shoot, I have the short sound, then the reload, and I can assure you that I'm trying to click and until it has reloaded, it's not being clicked. And when I'm shooting targets, and when I'm shooting in the bullseye, I'm getting it. And the score is being modified each time I take a shot. Well, each time I'm hitting a target, actually. If I'm just taking a shot in the background, it's not moving. It's not changing. All right, but at the moment our time is not moving uh, down, so we don't have really a, an end game yet. So let's go and do that. To modify this, let's go back into our event txt ready go. Add a sub event to it in which we are going to check every second, every one second, to subtract one from time left. And we also do set the time left 
txt time object text to time left and time left. So now we will have a counter that goes down. But at the same time, we now need to check as a sub event of this event that when time left is less or equal to zero, we will set the txt go boolean value to false and we will execute the function end game. And so now function end game add a blank sub event. It's not necessary. We could add the actions directly there, but I like to be able to collapse the functions. So we will set the crosshair position to minus 128 and minus 128. So top left corner outside of the layout. We'll set the cursor style of our mouse to normal. So the, the regular cursor is going to appear again. We will stop any timer that tries to create targets or creates or tries to create a deck. So no more targets will be created. And we also do destroy right away all the target stands which will destroy all the targets and all the bullseye. We will set the txt final text because it is the end of the game. You have scored. And score. And new line, which jumps a new line. And another new line, which allows to make a space and right click and new line and to restart the game we set the txt final object to be visible We display also the txt time up object as more feedback to our user. And we hide the txt score by setting it invisible as well as the time left. txt time objects are set to invisible. And we also do hide the rifle. set it to invisible and at that moment that's where we are also using the Sky Arcade submit score so leaderboard ID shooting gallery Kenny and score is score so the leaderboard ID you will see a bit later I will capture it as well is on when you are submitting your game into the Skyra arcade you can you, you have an option to create your leaderboard and the name you set your leaderboard to is the name you want to add right there so after having uploaded your game to the Skyra arcade you have an access to a leaderboard page into the games manager and it allows you to create a new leaderboard. So the leaderboard name there is the leaderboard ID we used previously in our code when submitting the score to the Skyra Arcade. We have copied and pasted the very same name. Shooting, shooting, 
Gary Kenny. Should we Gary Kenny? We create the leaderboard. The leaderboard has been created. So we go back to the page on the arcade. So currently the game is uh, is in private mode. I've uploaded but it's not available for everyone. And so let's try to make some score. Time is up, and the score has been submitted. Hooray! And so, in the end game, it will automatically submit your score to the leaderboard. And the last event I need to add is on click, this time on right click. You want to reset the global variables and restart the layout. So it actually can happen at any time during the execution of the game, but we are just letting our user know about it at the very end. And that should complete our project. Let's preview. Ready, go! Targets are arriving. We're shooting. It's reloading. Shooting. The time is going down. The score is going up. So, we have set up our project with a lot of graphical assets. A few events a few elements of gameplay, the fact of having the bullseye that are adding some time will allow to have some people having better scores in the end. And we have done so using creative common assets that we have found on the, on the internet. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to check out some of the other Constructor Academy material. Thank you for watching.